Hey, all you holistic hipsters out there, it's that time. So grab your chalice of choice and sit back and sip along with us. We would love to welcome you to the Tea Podcast, where we spill the tea on all things holistic in the pet grooming industry. Let me introduce you to our hostesses with the mostesses. She is the socialite of skin and coat care, Ms. Michelle Knowles. And the queen bee of all things oily, Ms. Melissa conti Diener. Brought to you by TheOilyGroomer.com Are you searching for a new and more mindful way of grooming? Interested in understanding how to grow your grooming business with a more holistic and organic approach? Please contact Melissa conti Diener at TheOilyGroomer.com so that you can set up a meeting and bring balance and prosperity to your life. And AllThingsPaw.com Intermediate and advanced courses in pet esthetician work, fear recovery, animal handling, and more. Get your learn on with all things paw. Also, classes with Melissa, online and self-guided, intuitive energy work, transitional therapy, and compassionate touch point therapy, and more. And the Herbal Paw Pet Apothecary. Tailored for the individual pet, phone consultations, history gathering, and the home of the Herbal First Aid Kit. Now, let's get the tea party started. Welcome, and hello. hello. Here we are again. We seem to always find ourselves here. <laughs> we woke up one more time. <laughs> right side of the dirt i'm happy so, i guess i know it's not a it's, it's, a, it's a very melancholy day for michelle it's a, well not real well my husband's out of town yeah it makes me sad he's going to lecture at uh a convention of his peers so I just Yay, dropped him off this lie. morning. I know I'm so proud of him. Yes. Um, so if you don't know, we refer to her husband as the the Donny Lama. So he is the Donny Lama. Yes, yes he, is. he is. Yes, he is. So he is a wonderful, wonderful man. And yes, he is. I'm super excited for him that he's getting all these opportunities to go out and and share his uh, share his vision mm -hmm. um, with and his uh, knowledge and, and yeah. he's very knowledgeable in the field that he's chosen. And I'm. I'm so excited. They're going to record it. So hopefully I'll get a copy oh, of the recording. Yeah. That'll be yeah. nice. So what are you drinking anything this morning? Have you concocted anything? I have. Um. <laughs> hopefully it's a Red Bull. Um. <laughs> I have my mushroom cup today. I know. She needs energy. Uh, it's a balancing blend. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. And it has more happy Michelle and less it has, <laughs> it has cramp mark in it because my shoulders, the muscles in my shoulders and back. I'm learning how to quilt. If you didn't already know that, you've seen a couple of my first tries. Um, but cutting the squares is working my shoulders and back like I'm grooming again. It's so crazy. So I'm just uh, you know, trying to chill with my tea. <laughs> Take it slow from your from your sewing chair. I know. I have to remind myself to stop because I get all frenetic. Yeah. And my eyes, I'm not closing my eyes so that I don't cut it <laughs> wrong. So yeah. my eyes get dry and I'm like, oh, I'm going to take a break. <laughs> it's so dumb. <laughs> People do it so that they can relieve stress. Michelle does it and she's like. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's true. Uh, What's in your cup, sweetheart? I have my one of my favorites. It's that strawberry uh, rose. That oh, yeah. In my mm -hmm. little kitten cup. It says, cat to be kitten me, right meow. So, and then when you drink right, all yeah. your stuff and down at the bottom, it says queen. Of course <laughs> it does. Of course it does. At the bottom of my cup because I need all the affirmation I can get. That it's I true. Need. I feel that. Um, yeah. yeah. 
somebody said to me one day at work, they were like, oh, that's right. We forgot. You're the princess. And I said, no, 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 no. <laughs> the queen. That's what I said. I said, I'm the queen. I am not the princess. <laughs> I'm, all, I'm far, far beyond princess. Dumb. You've been promoted for a long time. Absolutely. <laughs> I started to proclaim myself the queen quite a while ago. So, um, no. You're actually queen regnant. Yes. Yes. Because that means you're in charge. It doesn't in mean you charge, just married yeah. a king. <laughs> so, uh, I said, uh, we, I, I'm my my favorite email address, which drives my husband crazy when people go, well, what does, do you have a personal email address? And I'm always like, yeah. And it's actually her Royal Highness. I know. And, <laughs> so I actually carry the HRH, you know, yes, yes. <laughs> you got yeah, one day I'll be, I'll be knighted and be a, ma um, a dame. There you go. I, I, I went right for the crown. I look so forward I, to it. Yeah. <laughs> I said, I'll snatch the crown. Thank you. <laughs> uh -huh. Too much responsibility. I can't be queen. I don't care. <laughs> I'll take it all. I don't I've got to be the crazy weird one up in the tower. Yeah. <laughs> That's my jam with access to the garden. I'm, yeah. I'm good to go. Yeah, that's okay. You can be Merlin. You can be my Merlin. Fantastic. <laughs> Perfect. So what are we talking about this morning, madame? Today Ma <laughs> we have Bam. Ah, very good. The very good, good, the bad, and the ugly dealing with reviews. Yeah. Because everybody trips over reviews. They're just yeah. like, ah, I got a review, and it's yeah. XXX. It can set you on a path of destruction, like a spiral, if you will. Yeah. It I've really seen some happened. spirals here in the recent, in the recent yep. past. Me too. I was reading in one of the groomer groups uh, about a girl that actually, you know how they say no good deed goes unpunished, which is a, a saying I personally despise because that's not true. If you but do a good deed, you do a good deed, whether they deed. like it or not. Exactly. <laughs> and if it comes back around where you feel like you're being punished for it, maybe it, there's a lesson in that. Even if the lesson is, you know, that you you feel used and abused, mm -hmm. uh, the lesson is sometimes you don't get the outcome that you would that you would think from a good right. deed. You mm -hmm. know, but it was still a good deed. Mm -hmm. And I personally believe good deeds, good karma comes back around to you. I feel like that creates ripples. So mm -hmm. um, I agree. I agree. So, uh, but we live in an age where reviews are a big thing. Yeah, you know, I, don't everybody, think so. I, I do. I believe that most people will review negatively before they'll review positive. I believe that's true. Yes. I believe that they really will mm. take to, you know. They'll love you. They love you until they hate you. And then they'll talk about it. Yes. They may not refer you. They may not get on and be like, oh, my groomer is excellent. And my groomer is wonderful. But as soon as your groomer, their groomer is not one of those things in their opinion at that particular mm. time, they're fast. Most people are quick to jump on the bandwagon of, you know getting on there and just starting to become a troll and mm -hmm. want to destroy someone. We've all seen those pictures on everything from regular social media, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, or X, uh, all the things where they're like, this was my doodle before and this was my doodle after. And the person's like crying and the thing. But we then, all know it's because her doodle was matted. Matted, exactly. Let's all face the facts. So yeah. you really can discount those as far as I'm concerned. Right. Yeah, but yeah, your doodle was over. shaved down. Yeah. <laughs> they're all over. And yeah. so what we need to do, I believe, is because that's a negative review of your services. The, the general public doesn't understand matting, most of them, you know, and. Uh, Not even when you show them. Exactly. In person. And the yeah. comb doesn't go through. Right. No, it's just curly. It's fine. Yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. So I think that as, as a collective, we, and I'm seeing more and more of this, uh, mm -hmm. we need as groomers to take to the social media and post things that show this is matted. This is why this doodle went from this to this naked, you know, got a summer mm -hmm. smoothie is what I call them. Um, because you did not do any home grooming yeah, or you didn't bring them in on a regular basis for me to maintain that coat for you. Mm -hmm. So I think that we need to flip the script on those kind of, uh, video reviews because that's literally what they're doing is reviewing your services like that. Um, yeah. and say, Hey, this is why, and this is what your dog looks like and show when you're shaving that matting off that it comes off in sheets and it looks like a pelt. And, um, mm -hmm. Helen Schaefer just did a, or has a video up. It's not mm -hmm. new, but, um, I show my students a lot of her stuff. She's, She's really good at um, presenting different ways of dealing with um, uh, different coat types. And she's a groomer extraordinaire. So mm -hmm. uh, and uh, she has one on wet shaving, which I'm an advocate for. I I like to wet shave a matted coat. And so um, uh, she does one like that. And it actually shows when that coat is wet, how it looks when it's not dry and just looks curly, you know, um, when it's wet, you can actually see that, um, down to the skin that there is no separation in there. And, um, so those make good snippet videos for you to combat those types of, uh, video reviews. Mm -hmm. And I, I think we can categorize reviews as well. One is always the shaving review. Uh, mm -hmm. that's a solid category. My dog was shaved and I didn't ask for it and blah, 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 whatever, whatever, you know, uh, all the shaving ones belong in that category. As far as I'm concerned, then so you, you should have be able to combat that with a form. If you are shaving, you should have a form that says your dog's matted. I am mm -hmm. going to be shaving and put the length on there and you the, need a release form. Yes. You and all these form. things can come with a close shave and mm -hmm. that, you know, they're signing that and acknowledging that. So then if they take to the airways or they take to, you know, whatever, and you can say, hey, I told you this. Here's the form. Mm -hmm. You sign this. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So go ahead. And if they're leaving their dog up. in your care, um, they're trusting you to make a, a good professional judgment call on whether or not that pet needs taken down or not. Right. Um, always, uh, I do recommend whether they sign a release form or not absolutely call them and let them know that's what's going to happen and give them a choice. Do you want to pick this dog up? Because if you leave him with me, he's going to be naked. Right. You know, um, that's something that I firmly believe in. Give them the choice ahead of time. Oh no, I didn't want him shaved. I'm like, well, that's the only alternative I have. I can't even bathe him. He's so matted or whatever. Right. Whatever it is that your process is, your policy. But that's one category of review. The next one is, you were rude to them. Oh, yeah. And that could be anywhere from you might have been actually rude to them or they just didn't. You weren't saying what they wanted to hear. Right. So you were rude. Um, and uh, yeah, just sometimes people, people can be really hateful because there's no consequences. Uh, there's no consequences for calling you Captain Bly. Yeah. <laughs> That's a personal feather in my cap. I've been called Captain Bly. Uh, and I, th I thought that was really wonderful. It is a feather in my cap. It's like a metal. I called a monster. A monster! Oh my God. You? Yep. <laughs> the I, most I, gentle I, person in the whole entire I, universe. <laughs> I was grooming a cocker spaniel that had lashes for days, and it somebody made a noise or whatever, and of course the owner wanted the lashes, and it flipped its head around just as I was doing that clean face. I had my thumb over the lash and I even put my, my uh, scotch tape cause I'll put scotch tape over the lash to make it heavy to hold it out of the way. And I had that on there and he whipped his face around right into the clipper. Of course. And there went that lash. I mean, there was like a little teensy, you know, few inches off of the left, but other than that, that was it. 
And so I had to take the other side because it looked silly with one that was all the way out, one that was super short. And when she picked up, I apologized profusely. And, and she looked at me and she said, you monster. They will never. Oh, lashes. Yep. They will yeah. never grow back again like that. And then mm -hmm. she proceeded to uh, write a review. I think it was on Yelp. Uh, this was when I had my shop that I uh, mutilated her pet. And mutilated that, her pet because he took out some lashes. Yep, and that the lashes were needed to uh, keep her dog's eyes clean from all the dust and uh, debris that's in the Arizona air. I mean, fair enough. It is dusty here. But right. I don't think that's much But I don't think she was living in a haboob. Right. I, you know, I mean, and I was quite protected in her upper suburban. Yes. yes. So it was just, <laughs> she literally was clutching her dog and she was like, you monster. And mm -hmm. I was like, I had crazy. a woman come in uh, and she had a beautiful standard poodle and she wanted a show puppy trim and the dog was in a show puppy trim. And I know how to do a, a show puppy trim. Um, but the person who had been taking care of her dog uh, thought that the crest on top of the withers mm -hmm. um, should just stay matted. And that's how she got it to get, hold that shape. And you could see the skin was starting to bruise because it was so matted. Yeah, I and I called her and let her know. I'm like, I can't leave this this area like this. This has to be dematted. I said, I can de try and demat it, but it's not going to have that shape that you'd like. It'll have to grow in. I said those words into her ear. Like I said those words. And she yeah. goes, I understand. Blah, blah. I did it. And then, of course, I butchered, mm -hmm. butchered her dog. Butchered. Yeah. But that was all like a solid piece of mat. And I just, I just, I don't know about that, you know? It's, it's always. Maybe she could have used, uh, the previous Gruber could have used wiggies or something like that to support right. her shape or whatever. But I couldn't, in all eth, uh, you know, ethic consciousness, I could not keep just bruising, you know, keeping that area bruised. I thought that was very disgusting. So yeah. and, I butchered and her dog and yeah. made it more comfortable. Well, and what's funny is I know like that she was monster. already uh, a groomer shopper because the dog came to me. Right. You know, and not only that, then I had moved to a couple of shops after that. And she always called ahead of time to check our prices and to check to see if I was the groomer there. Right. <laughs> and I said, yes, I, this is me. Yes, it right. is. And she'd be like, oh, I can't go there. I'm like, oh, dodged a bullet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> are you really losing when when these people take to the fair are you really losing i mean is it really turning people off from your services when you read something like that like when i saw that that in that review she called me a monster she told me i mutilated her pet and she wrote that in there and she had a picture of the dog before with its lashes and yes the lashes are beautiful mm -hmm. and i mean i have the same thing i have Jujubee has lashes for days, my one Shih Tzu. Jade used to until two weeks ago when I groomed her, and she did the same thing. I was trying to hold the lashes out of the way, and she whipped her head around, and I shaved it off. And it happens. It does, so, but they grow back. Exactly. They're weird like that. Dislocate. If the dog is alive, they'll come yeah. back. So, <laughs> what I mean, are you really losing? Because this person is uh, that unstable. Yeah, that is unstable. And I tend to feel in my heart of hearts, um, the people that are not right in the head that are um, saying you butchered your, her, their dog and you're a monster and this, that and the other over lashes and things like that. They tell on themselves in the review and I tend not to even right. acknowledge those. Um, I've had a handful in my lifetime, but they always say, well, this is what happened. And that's what happened. And everybody is reading this going, well, this happened. She can't help that. Like, right. What do you expect? I had a guy who uh, got mad because the cat was uh, done uh, and I didn't groom the cat, but my colleague did. And he was mad because we kept telling him, well, the cat decided it was finished. It was done. He couldn't take any more because uh, he wanted the legs, the boots. 
um, blended into the seven lion trim that he had or 10 lion trim or whatever it was at the time. I don't remember. Um, and he's like, oh, so you just let the cat tell you that he's done being groomed. And I was like, absolutely. And he made a review saying that we were stupid uh, and all this other stuff uh, because we expected the animal to let us know when it was finished. Right. And everybody who read it, actually, we've had we had a couple of comments like, of course, they they did that. That's humane. Right. You force your cat. If you think your cat needs blended, go ahead. Go ahead. Blend yep. it. <laughs> But it was beautifully done, perfectly clean, uh, no lines on the coat. Like it, it was very well done. Just the boots weren't blended. Yeah. And he wanted his money back and blah, blah. And that was a whole story for a whole different day. I'm sure you've heard me laugh about it before because it was yeah, so funny. It just, well, and the thing is, is that it's just you're always going to get those kind of people. Mm -hmm. You're going to get people that just are never going to be satisfied. They're mm -hmm. unhappy with, I, I've had reviews on, on Yelp about like, they just went on there and were just very upset with the pricing. Right. And it's like, how do you deal with that? How do you, yeah. you, you know, um, I look at it this way. Okay. I can walk into Kohl's and price, uh, a piece of jewelry, you know, mm -hmm. and then I can walk into Neiman Marcus and price the same piece of jewelry or, and there's a variation, you know, mm -hmm. same exact, or I could go to Target and buy a purse, or I can go to Louis Vuitton and buy a purse. And while mm -hmm. they both perform the same exact function. Are you going to, contact or make a review on Louis Vuitton. Exactly. Because they're not selling $30 purses. Yes. That's Am ridiculous. I going to be angry at them because right. Target will sell this to me for $30 while you want this much for your $1,500 or whatever it is, 2000 or a Birkin bag, you know, for $5,000. Mm. And it's like, why are you angry at me? Because mm -hmm. you want this style of service, but you want it at the cost of this. Mm -hmm. So that's, that is not a review. Um, that they you want a full professional trim from an experienced right. stylist for a self-serve price. Right. Yeah. And you can't respond to that. You know, when mm -hmm. you go in and you respond to these also, because sometimes I will look at the responses and you guys are great with posting your reviews and then doing the screenshots of like you going back and forth and talking to them about these things. And, um, but it never placates them. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it just never, uh, smooth is, smooths over those rough edges. It only exacerbates the situation and makes them angrier. Mm -hmm. Because the way you overcome those kind of reviews, if they're beyond your control, Right. Uh, and the dog wasn't injured. Uh, it was just like an eyelash thing or a money thing or a we were mean thing or whatever. Right. Um, just said, oh, I'm so sorry that we, we couldn't serve you correctly. And, you know, in the future, think of us, uh, you know, if we can, if you think we can do better, blah, blah, blah. And then leave it, you know, say what you're going to say. Uh, tell them to have a nice day, basically. Right. Um, being kind to them number one makes them angrier because you're not angry. They didn't rile you up. Right. Especially when they try to ask for a refund, you don't get a refund. The services were rendered, whether you like it or not, right. the services were rendered. The stylist deserves to be paid for their time. Uh, so just say a little, I'm sorry, we couldn't serve you uh, up to your expectations. Uh, please have a nice day. That's all you have to say. You don't have to reiterate it and hash it and prolong it. Let those people go. They're going to be miserable wherever they go. Yep. And you don't you don't have to waste your time on those. W uh, waste your time, uh, if it's a waste of time, on the ones that really do need to be addressed. An injury to a pet. Right. Uh, you know, something that happened, you know, that needs to be addressed. Or a fear, whether uh, sound or unsound, of uh, mishandling or whatever. You know what I mean? There, those do need miss, to be addressed. Even just miscommunication, like you, you people will get on and they'll write a, a, a poor review. Like I was supposed to have an appointment and I showed up and they didn't have the appointment and they couldn't get me in and they rescheduled me. Blah blah. 
do that. Yes, that would be that's a miscommunication somewhere. Somebody dropped the ball most of the time, you know. Mm -hmm. So um, being a business owner, I I would apologize and get them in and then offer them something. I never take money off of my service, but I will offer additional services. Yeah, you offer a foot you know. soak or special bows right. or exactly. um, toenails painted right. or right. A, a mask or something, something. Yep. Uh, Just to make up for the, the foible, whether it was on mm -hmm. my end or their end. Exactly. I and I've had clients that just want to get in that day for whatever reason. They're right. like, I had an appointment and they're big fat liars. Yeah. And they'll lie. They will lie. <laughs> I even try to accommodate them. But if it happens over and over and over again, because, well, we, we have a receptionist and she writes everything down. She's pretty meticulous. So if she didn't get it on the books, it's rare. Right. Uh, so if you, if you, it happens a second time, we know that's a lie. And just, and by the second time I'm like, oh, we can't accommodate you today, but I had an appointment. I'm like, I'm sorry. I don't think you did. Right. We've had people come in on the wrong days and we're slammed. Uh, and they know and understand that they're not there on their correct appointment day. And they go back home and come back when they're supposed to. Those are the clients you want to cultivate. Those are the clients right. you want to pay attention to. If they're just going to be mean to you the entire time, write bad reviews because of whatever, whatever, um, just let them go. Say, I'm sorry, we couldn't accommodate you. Have a nice day and move on. Yeah. It hurts your feelings. Yeah. You want everybody to love you. Like I get that. Right. I get that. And you know, you didn't do anything wrong. So letting them go is doing right by yourself. Just shed it off like water off a duck's back. And you need to just move on because you will never please those people. And the people that read the review and know them personally know that they're like that anyway. Mm hmm. You can see it in somebody's review if they're petty or not. Yeah. Don't Absolutely. don't sink to their level. Don't be petty as a business owner. He writes above that and say, I'm sorry we couldn't accommodate you. You know, this is a this is a human business working on live animals. Right. And you know, we do the very best we can. And sometimes we just don't meet your expectations. And I'm so sorry. You know, we did everything possible to make your pet comfortable, not cut the lashes, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um just say so. Say thank you so much. I hope you find somewhere that that can accommodate you and that you're happy. We, we wish you happiness. Say something nice to them. They'll stay fuming because you weren't mad like they wanted you to be. Mm -hmm. There was even one time this woman who just was going on and on about um, she didn't like our receptionist at the time. Our receptionist now is a darling. Um, she didn't like our receptionist and she did wrong and she scheduled her wrong and she did this and she did that. And she kept calling back and said, she said it was going to be this price and just on and on, like every single thing that she could think of. And what, what happened was uh, the group, the receptionist at the time was getting ready to quit because she was moving and it was so hilarious. So just to make the client just calm down, I'm like, you're right. I'm going to address that. Uh, and she might not have a job after this. Um, and she's like, oh, I don't want to get anybody fired. I'm like, well, it's not just this. It's other things like that. And then the next time she came in for grooming, the receptionist wasn't there anymore. And she's like, oh, my gosh, did I get her fired? I said, she just wasn't working out. <laughs> and she never complained again. It was hilarious. And everybody was snickering in the back, listening to me in the front room because it was hilarious. I just took advantage of the situation to please this yeah. client because she it was a high paying client. Uh, but she, I, we taught her kind of not to complain. Yeah. You know, it, not everything's going to be all perfect. Right. I, you know, go home and beat your staff. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. It's good. You know, I don't know. Well, and then you get the opposite. You get, you get the people like uh, when I had my shop, my mom was my receptionist and my mom is just my mom. She is just says whatever she wants. No filter. She doesn't mess around. She's been in the beauty business for more than 40 years She's and heard it all, seen it all. Yep. And so carry she's on. Owned, yep. She's owned multiple, um, not grooming salons, but hair, hair salons. salons. Yeah. yeah. And so she kind of got into it with a customer over the pricing. And the lady was, you know, not wanting to pay whatever it was, matted dog, the whole nine yards. Now I'm in the back and I'm grooming. And my mom, I hear my mom going up with this woman and this lady. I want to talk to the owner. I want to talk to Melissa, blah, 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 blah. So she doesn't know that this is my mother. Mm -hmm. And so I come up front and she said to me, listen, I paid that price. 
I don't like her. She has an attitude and I will not be back unless you fire her. And so I said, okay, I understand. I'm like, but that's my mother. I'm not firing my mother. And so she said, well, now I know where you get your bad attitude from. And yeah, <laughs> and she got her dog and she walked out and, but she had uh -huh. pain. Yeah. And then she wrote a nasty review about it. Yeah. Um, they're saying that we were said that we were from New York, which we're not, we're from New Jersey and South Philadelphia. But anyway, um, you East coasters. Yes. And that was <laughs> food and blah, blah, and all this stuff while well, she was angry because she had to pay matted fees. You know what right. I mean? That her dog was matted and she had to pay additional fees for that, mm -hmm. which she knew in the beginning. And I think she thought if she pitched a fit. I think some important. people are embarrassed too. Right. And so they think, Oh my God, they think I'm neglecting my dog, which we do. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you are, <laughs> but you know, that's what we're here for. You know, but that's when I, when I do the customer service portion of my class, when I teach the students and I talk to them about customer service, one of the things I, I like to give them is a, I, I refer to their business as whether it's your business or you work for someone within a business. Mm -hmm. I, I call that the garden. So mm -hmm. um, when you are in your place of work, that is your garden. You are cultivating what you want to grow there, whether it's making sure that your customers leave good reviews or that they just know your name so they can request you, you know, right. like mm -hmm. you are literally cultivating a culture that you want right. within that business. Mm -hmm. When those people come in that are um, just the, what I like to call the pitas, you mm -hmm. know, um, they're disruptive. They're, they're hateful. They're Their hateful. life sucks. So they take it out on everybody, no matter everybody who they are. else. They're the weeds and we need to weed the garden and we leave them Perfectly in there. Said. We leave them in there sometimes and we're like, well, I love the dog. The dog's so sweet and da, 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 da. But this human being causes so much aggravation and strife that it literally affects everyone's day. And we mm -hmm. know it. We start to see that name on there and then we're like, oh my God, not them. And yeah, you're not required to carry a stress headache or heart no. palpitations because you see a certain Fluffy Smith is on the books and you right. have to deal with the mom. Forget it. You know, if they want to go somewhere else, let them. Invite them to. A lot of them will threaten. You know, they'll be like, well, I'll I'll go on Facebook or I'll go on Twitter or I'll go on whatever. And you I'll do what you got to do. Exactly. Because they tell on themselves by the tone of their review. If people know that they're those, just like a meh, 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 meh. Well, if you look up those people under their account on these things, like on Facebook or on those and look up the reviews that they've done, you'll see that they have tons of negative reviews. They hate on everybody. Right. And everyone. It's not just mm -hmm. you. They hate the restaurant that's down the street. Yes. The florist, the this, you know, nothing is they're good They're hateful. Enough. Nothing is good in their life. <clears throat> everybody's against them. Everybody's right. doing them dirty. Yeah. They're not getting the respect that they deserve. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And I'm a queen and I know what respect. Right. Is. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You so, know the etiquette. Exactly. So, I mean, they're, that's just them. And there's no reason to be like that. There really isn't. I mean, sometimes things get twisted, whether mm -hmm. it's the style of the haircut, whether it's the length, Mm -hmm. Um, I know where I currently work, we use a clip chart, you know, like the, the, has the little fuzzy pieces on the paper on the little laminated sheet that shows right. the basic lengths to choose from. But we tell them, listen, this seven on your dog is going to, we're going to see skin. It doesn't look like that on the mm -hmm. chart mm -hmm. because this is number one, fake fur. Number two, it's thicker than what your dog has. So we need to actually go with the three. And that's going to look like a seven on your dog because your dog has four hairs on his body, you know? Right. So we have to explain that sometimes to people. And so sometimes things get misconstrued or our head's not all there. We're not all the way awake and we forget to say things to them. And then we shave that dog and they come in and they go, oh my God, my dog is literally a, looks like a mole rat. Mm -hmm. And so we it's okay to take responsibility at those times but 
don't take on the burden of responsibility when you're dealing with someone that just is dismayed with everything. I know it makes my heart hurt when I read the the boards and somebody is just verklempt over a review and they just keep going over and over what they right. could have done differently. And it's like, baby, it's not you. Yep. It's not you. It's them. You know, it's time to get a divorce. It's time to break up with that person. Uh, let them go. Invite them to say, you know what? We, we have tried our very best, but I don't believe we can accommodate you here. Um, you know, you require a service that we cannot provide and invite them to go to another salon. I am infamous for keeping a list of other salons in the area. Uh, and I will just give like. them a copy of uh, the list. We and don't like, like and send them over there to that. Absolutely. <laughs> I just like try some of these. Maybe they can accommodate what you need. You know, we just can't. We've tried several times. You know, it's just right. not working out. It's okay to be like that. It's okay to say that to people. Um, and don't worry about it. You will live to groom again. You will wake up tomorrow and have a full day and be sad or tired or excited because you've got 18 million dogs to do. Uh, it's fine. You will live well, through it. How And we've discussed this before when we talked about pricing, but how many times do we hear just in the salon or just in grooming? And when we look at the boards, the different groups and stuff, do we hear groomers say, and I only charge them blah, 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 when mm. I should be charging them, blah, blah, blah. Mm. And they, they don't even appreciate the fact that I'm doing this and that and da, 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 da. Why are you still doing this, that, and the other, and only charging this? Mm. If you charge a hundred dollars for a dog, small dog, and you're charging them 75, uh, because they're the friend of a friend or they're, you know, your pastor's wife or wh whoever it is, we, you should not be giving that discount. You should be treating them like any other customer because that opens the door for them to feel like they're able to step into that category. Oh, I'm not like everyone else. Mm -hmm. So therefore, Not only that, I if you devalue what you do, yes. so will they. Yes. If you don't, if they know you usually charge a hundred and you're, you're charging them 75, they're like, oh, I was overpaying anyway, wasn't yep. I? Uh, charge what you're worth, charge what your business can sustain <clears throat> and your overhead. Uh, there is a formula that you can use to find out what you should be priced at per hour, per dog, per job, whatever, however you have your particular right. salon set up. Um, but charge your worth, absolutely charge your worth and never feel guilty for putting on a mat fee or a handling fee or whatever, whatever. No, um, you that's your time. That says it in, you know, that they, they were outrageously priced or they upcharged or they, you know, so don't feel bad when they uh, post those things. Yes, I did because your dog required that additional work. And additional mm -hmm. tools and additional skills and all the things that come with that. Mm -hmm. uh, Absolutely. Answer. Brush your dog. Brush your dog. Yep. Brush your dog, people. Yeah. So, I mean, it is amazing to me that we uh, are able to step into that role where we want to do good. You know, we want to help. We, I, I honestly, I believe that a large portion of our industry are um, very compassionate people that want to. They're givers. Yes, yeah, they absolutely givers. want to care for and give and give and give and give. Yeah. And they don't think uh, uh, very much of themselves. So they don't yeah. expect other people to also. And then they get sad when they get treated bad. Yes. You teach other people how to, how you want to be treated. You have to teach them the level of respect that you require to have a business relationship. Yep. So you have to set, you set the boundaries for that. So if you're, if you're giving people refunds right and left for an eyelash that's cut and this, that, and the other, they're not going to respect you. No. Um, so what? Eyelash got cut. So what? One foot got closer and you can see the nails than the other three. You're working on a live animal. Right. And you do better next time. And if they love your work and they know the dog is happy and safe with you, uh, as safe as possible and as happy as possible under the circumstances, they'll come back. Uh, some people will forgive a mediocre groomer 
Yeah. As long as they know their dogs are happy, happy and healthy and, and well taken care yeah, of and right. they're clean. Um, it's the relationship that you cultivate with your clients that is going to keep them coming back. And if one comes in and they are a price shopper or they can't find, they find fault with everything that you do and they think your shop stinks or your furniture is old or your blah, blah, it could be anything. Let them go. Say, oh, we're not a good fit. Bye. 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 <laughs> I think it also has a lot to do, again, with cultivating the relationships with your customers. Mm -hmm. There are a couple of things. Um, we have a policy where I work that we do not deal with aggressive dogs. If we have to muzzle them for a few minutes to do something like the dog absolutely hates its feet touched, we'll put the muzzle on, get the nails trimmed real quick, take the muzzle off and all is done and over with and everything went safely and we're good to go. Um, but if we have to muzzle that dog for the bath, for the blow dryer, for the nails, for the clipper, for the, that's not a dog that, that should go to a specialist exactly. that, that works with those type of those dogs. Types of dogs. Exactly. There are people out there who love those dogs and yeah. love, find very fulfilling uh, uh, work working with those animals. Yeah. Kate and I used to do that at her shop when I worked up there with her. We literally specialized in dogs that were kicked out of everywhere mm -hmm. uh, and that were too old or whatever. So we had a dog one day that came in, um, the owners came in, husband and wife, and they, and oh my God, you know, I, I have rescue dogs. I think almost everybody I know has some rescue story, you know, whether it's clients of mine, all kind of stuff. So I believe that rescue is a very good thing. However, I believe that people cling to the rescue story. And they do not let that dog escape from that rescue story. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine if you were adopted as a child and the whole time you were growing up, everybody's like, oh, we adopted you from a, you know, a, a mother that mm -hmm. was a drug addict. And, and you could father. never get away from it. You could never. Every time you turn around when they would say, oh, this is our daughter, Michelle. Here she is. Her mother was a drug addict. Her father was a bank robber. Her, you know what I mean? And they were living on the streets and we had to come in and swoop her out of there and take her. Oh, well, what a hero. Things. Yeah, and right. And here she is, and she's 22 years old. You, right. know, you know, it's like that's what they do at the check in for the dogs. Dog. Forget things from yesterday if yesterday. they weren't traumatic. Right. They live. You in could, the yeah. Maybe you rescued them once, but if you're still calling your dog a rescue and it's five years, you've had him five right. years, it's not a rescue. It's not a rescue. It's your dog now. Yeah, and it's so just your can't... family. Start treating yeah. it like it's happy and healthy and it's part of your family. And they come in and they're like, for as soon as they walk in, they're like, it was their first time there. He hates the groomer. He hates the groomer. He hates coming here. He hates this. He hates everything. Right. So I said, well, what does he hate about it? Oh, he just hates everything. He doesn't like, he doesn't like strangers. He, he's a rescue. He was pulled from a junkyard with other dogs. He was a bait dog. He was, the, you know what I mean? Like it was this big, long story. And so I reached down to touch the dog and the dog tried to bite me. Like mm -hmm. just literally lunged right at me and was growling the whole time I was standing in proximity to them. And so I said, listen, I don't think we're going to be able to work with your dog because he has some underlying aggressive aggression, whether it's fear, aggression, whatever it is. It's not it's not how we work here. You need to seek out a groomer that is they were so upset with me and they literally looked at me and said, well, we're still trying to find a groomer who knows how to do their job. That dog's issues became my problem in their eyes mm -hmm. and they left and they wrote a review saying and i explained to them listen this is our policy this is why because you know it stresses the dog out to keep the muzzle on the whole time you know there's all these things that we believe for our grooming we don't work that way and so they wrote a review saying that we didn't know what we were doing because we did not know how to handle their special needs rescue dog on the other side of that same coin, I've had a client or two. Uh, I do take in aggressive dogs. They are my specialty. I, right. I love working with those types of dogs. I prefer that over all else, uh, skin and aggressive dogs or special needs or whatever. 
Um, and they came in with that same story. Oh, he's a rescue. He hates everything, blah, blah, blah. And I'm able to do the groom perfectly. And the dog never got, was bothered. And we right. ended up being great friends by the end of the day. And they come and pick him up. And I gave him a clean report card. And they, the parents have clinged so tightly to the narrative in their head that this dog is special needs. And he doesn't like anybody. And he's special. And I just proved that that narrative in their mind incorrect, that the dog can learn as long as you make him comfortable, blah, 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 on and on. And give me a bad review saying, oh, I must have drugged him. Yeah. I'm, I mean, it's just, it's well, unreal they ask, that they just make up things in their right. head. Or did you, you know, did you give the dog something or can't, or that's, you know, people will say, well, can't you give him something to calm him down? No, you need to go to a veterinarian for that. And I'm not qualified to dispense medication right. to a dog. Yeah. You we know. don't have anything in the salon to give your dog at all. I have aspirin and that's for us. Or we don't even take them if they, like people will bring them in and say, yeah, I, I don't gave like them a Benadryl dog. or I yeah. gave them a Tramadol or I gave yeah, I them, like you it. know, I gave them this. So he's doped up for you. No, yeah, I would usually refuse those Yeah, uh, and say, yeah. we want to try it without that and first. Let me just say, Kate Clayson has a class on that when you're mm -hmm. working with the, and it's amazing. It is so eye opening. Mm -hmm. I think it's on uh, Mary Quendo's platform. Yeah. Positive Ed. So, yeah. Unless you're a veterinary groomer. Right. Um, with support staff waiting yeah. in the wings and, and at least being present in the building, you have no business working on those dogs. Yeah. They could, they could arrest. Yeah. They could pass out. Uh, I've had them aspirate on their Absolutely. own saliva. Yes. Because they're so anesthetized that they can't even breathe properly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's terrible. It's absolutely terrible. So, I mean, uh, that's a whole nother. Uh, now for our remaining, we just have a few minutes left. Uh, I want to talk about, okay, reviews when you actually cut a dog or hurt a dog oh, or an yeah. injury happened. Um, those are the ones that actually need to be addressed so that your public, your public consumer base, if you will, knows that you're on top of it, that you're insured, that you are working with the owner the very best you can to make sure that uh, the dog is taken care of or, you know, whatever, whatever it is that happened. I won't even get specific about injuries. Uh, when you have an injury, even if it's small, you go to the vet, you take it to the vet in several areas where I've worked at or I've visited, I've heard even owners say, well, we don't have to tell them because they just nicked an ear. I'm like, yes, you do. Yeah, always you always them. tell them if the dog fell off the table, if it got choked, if it did something, if it spun around beyond your control, yeah, it injured itself. Sure. You absolutely tell the owner. Yeah. Absolutely. And if it's a visible injury, you take it to the vet. And while you're on your way to the vet, they have the receptionist or you call the owner and say that right. something happened and meet, meet us at the vet. You know, you should have insurance that covers that. You should have, you know, uh, protocols in place, um, which also can be addressed at any good grooming facility or um, an addendum class uh, at one of the expos or an online course mm -hmm. about being prepared for emergencies. You have to do that because that's just good business practices. So if the dog does have an injury or something happened, you absolutely tell the owner, you absolutely go to the vet, uh, see what the vet says, and you pay for it. Yep. You can write that off. It's not like you're losing money. You write that off. Um, it's part of doing business. Dogs for. will injure themselves through yes. no fault of yours, and you still have to take care of that animal. And still have to tell the parents. So those are the ones, those are the reviews that you address and have a running public commentary on what's going on. If they choose to make a review, then you just put it all right. on the line and say, Hey, this is what happened. This is what we're doing. You know, we really do care about your pet. We really do care about, you know, what happens, blah, 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 and address it that way and stay Absolutely. professional. Keep feelings out of it. You can yeah. be compassionate, but keep feelings out of it because it is a business. Yes, I know. And that's the biggest, that's the biggest thing is that, you know, you want to do right, but you also don't want, like I've heard groomers say, well, uh, people are so happy, you know, like they're, li they're uh, litigation, um, 
just like they want to like get in there and oh they're going to sue my business now or they're going to sue me personally or whatever you have it's a risk that you take by having a business that's why you have insurance if you don't mm -hmm. have insurance you should and so it's important and you should have forms in place and you know so if a client takes to uh writing a, a, a negative review because you've injur injured their pet even if you've taken care of it, that doesn't excuse you from them being upset. Right. They can still be upset. Right. They can still be upset. They can still post a, a negative review and say, we'll mm -hmm. never be back. You know, they even on something tiny, like a little nick here or there, mm -hmm. or a little scrape or something. And, and you can address those by just saying, we are so sorry that happened. We are working with live animals and some right. things are just beyond our control. We're sorry this happened. We hope that you find somewhere that you're comfortable with. Right. And leave it at that, yep. you know, uh, and I know it's hard not uh, it's hard not to take those to heart. It's hard not to feel guilty and horrible for weeks and weeks and months and months until you can get over it, until you can process it. I understand that. I, I mean, I'm I'm the same way. Uh, I don't want to have anybody injured. I don't want to have anybody think bad about me except the Captain Bly lady. I don't really care about her. Yeah. <laughs> so. Uh, but all in all, I think that reviews, um, they're not really that important, truthfully. The people that love you will continue to love you yep. and will spread the word about how wonderful you are. And the ones that didn't have a good experience, well, you can't please everyone. You cannot please everyone. You cannot be perfect on every dog and never cut an eyelash uh, right. against the owner's will and never, you know, maybe all four feet can't be perfect 100% of the time. It, it just isn't going to happen. Ears get nicked. Uh, you use the wrong blade on the top and it goes shorter than you had anticipated. You're like, oh, shoot, you know, uh, and you compensate them in other ways. You work it out. But uh, I don't think that it's necessary just to club yourself over the head and think that you don't deserve the money that you worked for because you absolutely do. Um, and it's a huge marketing technique. Um, I have stood for in small claims court. Uh, for people trying to sue one of the salons that I'd worked at previously. Uh, and even the judge said, and they're like, well, she said that um, she'd do the next one free if I came back or whatever. And even the judge leaned over and says, that's a marketing ploy to get you to keep your business. It's like, that has nothing to do. You, they did the work. And if you want to go back there, they'll give you right. a free room. But you still have to pay for this one. And that's at their discretion. I can pull that back anytime I want. If they come in to me again, I can say, well, no, I've, I've changed my mind. It's going to be 70 or 108 or whatever. Uh, it's my prerogative to name my price. And it's their prerogative to accept that price and sign the release or take their dog to another establishment. It's business. And reviews are just a part of doing business. Mm -hmm. And so you have to kind of just chalk them up. Um, and don't get into the tete-a-tete -tete back and forth, you know. With, don't get into uh, the weeds. <laughs> yeah, do not get into the weeds. Remember, Absolutely. Something. Yeah. So um, if you see, if it seems like you have more negative reviews than you do positive, then you need to do some self-reflection. Absolutely. Maybe you need to change the way you're doing things. Right. And that, I think that is a constructive way to treat uh, uh, reviews in right. general. Um, but however, if you don't get that many reviews anyway, I literally rarely even address any review. Uh, I don't care. Um, if they're reviewing something that's legitimate, address it. Right. Uh, but if it's not legitimate and this person's just talking out of the side of their mouth or just being angry and gob being a goblin, let it go. I don't even, I don't even, I've forgotten it by the next day, unless I want to chuckle over it with friends. <laughs> it well, doesn't matter. It's very subjective as mm -hmm. well of what we do. Okay. Yeah. So it's just like finding the perfect hairdresser for yourself or, yeah. you know, the person that does whatever for you. It's a personal service. That is the business that we are in. The personal service is done on that person's personal pet. So while Mrs. Smith may love her Shih Tzu groomed by me, you know, Mrs. Jones may come and she has the same breed of dog, but yet she doesn't care for the way that I groom my dog. She can take to the internet and post a review and say, oh, 
three feet were looked good, but one foot, the toenails were showing or, mm -hmm. you know, um, she, or you forgot to trim one foot of toenails or something right. happened. Dude. I just had a client that came back to my house <laughs> because, uh, I literally, he has one dew claw on the back foot and it's one of those weird little hangers that just is misshapen to begin with. Mm -hmm. And I saw it and he was being a real pistol for it. So I was like, all right, I'll give him a minute and I'll come back to it. And being ancient, I forgot mm -hmm. <laughs> and sent him home and she called me and she's like, oh my God, you forgot Archie's uh, toe, you know, his, she calls it his toenail. She's mm -hmm. like, you forgot Archie's toenail. And I was like, oh my gosh. I was like, can you just run Yeah, bring him by. Bring him by. We'll take it. Care. Yeah. And granted, it was seven o'clock at night on a Friday night and she ran him over, you know, quickly to my house. She lives maybe 20 minutes from me. And it took two seconds for me to trim it. And so she was grateful and she was fine with that. Whereas somebody else may not have even said anything and may have gone online and been like, Duh, uh, uh, she forgot to cut the, you know, the main thing, the, the hanging toenail. So it's very personalized and it matters that we cultivate the people that want a relationship with us and mm -hmm. stop trying so hard to please the people that don't want to have a relationship with us. They're just concerned. With, or they want to have an abusive relationship. Right. Exactly. You know, they're just concerned with narcissistic behaviors and, um, and, and upset everybody's apple cart. Mm -hmm. It's not worth it. So you, you know, who butters your bread, mm -hmm. you know, like, you know, who comes back to you and you know, who is, forgiving when you make a mistake. If you're making too many mistakes, then you need to look at why you're making so many mistakes. Right. If you're, if everyone's complaining right. in one form or another, that is that it's time for self-reflection. Yeah, uh, for sure. For sure. So reviews are good in that sense that they are, you, you have to take some with that grain of salt, but sometimes, they're a good measure of, right, of how you're doing. Metric. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But sometimes Absolutely. it is a bitter pill sometimes that you have to, right, that you have to swallow. You have to say, okay, I have to own up to this. Mm -hmm. I'm overbooking myself. I'm going way too fast. Or that employee that I have is just not up to par. And I've mm -hmm. spoken to them on multiple occasions and they're just not up to our standards. And we've tried and while we like them, they are not ready to be in this position yet. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it has to be a metric to measure where you are. And but if you um, just get a few and far between reviews right. and they're all nonsensical, um, do not live and die by those reviews. No. You just don't. Well, most you consumers do your best. are, are, are um, kind of wary of service providers that have 100% perfect reviews. We're kind of like, hmm. Is this for real or is this fake? You know, are they getting their uncles and cousins and people to write all these reviews for them? I personally, when I look, I want some that are peppered with some, you know, kind of uh, not so perfect reviews. Mm -hmm. It tells me they're human, that they're trying that, you know, they're 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 not 100 percent all the time. Um, I don't know anybody that is. Right. So when I see that, so so those are also a badge of honor that says, hey, look, we're we're using these to make ourselves better. Mm -hmm. So yeah. reviews are not necessarily a bad thing. They can be a very frustrating thing for sure. But keep your garden weeded, well weeded and cultivated, and you will grow the business. Cultivate the flowers, not the weeds. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I think that's a good note to, to end this on, don't you? Yeah. I like it. Well, I enjoyed talking about that. I think it was Me appropriate. Me too. I thought that was a good one. Yeah. I think that, uh, I think sometimes as groomers, we just need permission, quote unquote, for somebody to say, you're still okay. And we're here to say, you're still okay. <laughs> we will validate you. Absolutely. And until we see you again, uh, may your next sip be just as delicious as your last. We'll see you next time.